The whole idea for the show started through conversations um, at the gallery that I work. There was a, a Melbourne artist, Linda Walker, and she, um, she referred to this artist, Artemio, who practices in Mexico, and he was running an artist-run initiative um, in Mexico um, for quite a few years, and um, it was a successful initiative, um, which is no longer running, but it ran for a, a fair amount of time. And I just was really interested to, I guess, connect um, back to Mexico and to the contemporary art scene in Mexico um, because being here throughout all my university education I didn't really have that much contact and I didn't really know about a lot of the history of um, contemporary practice in Mexico and just generally it was just like a personal ambition of mine to um, to get acquainted with um, artists and people that are doing similar stuff to what I do or something so by then I already had sort of chosen the um, people from Australia that I, I guess I sort of um, really liked their work or simply sort of thought I um, connected with the work or um, wanted, uh, liked what they were doing and um, when I went down to Mexico I had a presentation ready for the Mexican artist to sort of see um, a little bit, a bit of a sample of what I maybe had in mind but it was really open-ended, there wasn't a um, curatorial brief per se and there wasn't a thematic or anything like that so um, it was just a bit of a conversational change so there really wasn't any sort of limitation in terms of what they um, they could put into the show I just wanted to uh, have everyone engage in the conversation through the online forum and then see what happens from their interactions or something like that so most of the pieces are individual artworks created um, separately there is one piece this one here um, by Benjamin Ryan um, who is just here <laughs> Um, visiting from Tasmania, he's studying now, and this girl from Mexico, Marion Sosa, and they came up with this sort of, um, I guess, collaborative installation. Or it's well, it's more like two separate works, but sort of using the same space. That's how they wanted um, it to be displayed. Interesting when the blog sort of sort of started out of nowhere, because the first sort of thing that happened is that they started exchanging images with no sort of caption um, and the images were quite random and uh, it was just the, the first form of exchange and then um, then there was a bit of text but then there was a big lag between like when the the post was submitted and someone else would reply and there was a bit of awkwardness um, and then someone would reply to another thread that was sort of gone past and it was just really it wasn't structured at all whatsoever and um, even Joaquin one of the artists from Mexico as well one of his first posts he was just sort of confused and you could sort of hear in his writing that he didn't quite know what, what to do, whether like he was going to suggest some sort of, um, you know, some collaborative piece of whether he just needed to engage in like sort of some, something more theoretical or some sort of conversation regarding sort of art theory or what I think someone like Joaquin or Artemio, they would have been quite normalized with the way things sort of happened. It was just instructional and things were executed for them and but some of them were emerging as well and I think um, Probably someone like Pia Camille, the girl that did the billboard, um, she hadn't done this sort of exchange before and um, I guess some of them had previous experience and some of them um, it was just the first sort of international exchange kind of experience. Well, um, you know, it was sort of a thing where we were I guess pushing at some point for people to submit what they wanted to exhibit. So some of the first proposals that came through were for Peter's work, which had to be where it was. It was a site-specific design. Um, I was initially talking to Ivan about doing a work which was fitting into this corner. And, um, you know, and then this proposal came through with Marion and Ben to do this sort of um, environmental work. And we couldn't really place it anywhere else other than this kind of corner. And then, you know, we got this proposal for Ella's work which um, also kind of didn't, you know, we couldn't really imagine it anywhere else because it was, you know, it needed its own kind of environment. And um, I guess we, the, the two video works, the Artemio video um, and the Joaquin, Joaquin's video um, were older works, which we'd chosen at the end once, like we'd already known what was going into the other spaces. So following, not being able to do the work that I'd initially thought to do, I designed this work specifically in mind with what was going on in the other spaces. Yeah, I guess my, my initial sort of like um, thought with getting all these artists together was 
I don't know, I think I just naturally sort of went to either trying to find differences or similarities within their practice. So I guess that sort of indirectly was talking about like Mexican against Australian in a way. Um, but it didn't really quite happen like that. It just evolved in a different way, which I think I kind of liked. Um, but yeah, I guess that is something that sort of hap happened on its own. Um, although initially I thought maybe there would be some sort of dialogue related to the cultures. And there were a few posts where they did say, you know, maybe we share this sort of um, quality of insularity or something like that, one of the artists was saying, um, Joaquin. And then there was a few sort of um, answers to that as well, but it wasn't the focus. Mm. Yes. Yeah, but in my, in my escapades as the art enthusiast um, on the opening night, one of my questions, uh, sorry, just briefly, the concept was I was an art enthusiast who would harangue people for exactly five minutes um, <laughs> and each, each time. And one of the questions, and the questions had to be in the same order, the same every time, was what do you think this artwork is, Mexican or Australian? And it was amazing with what accuracy people who had, you know, just literally walked off the street unconsciously could pick up, you know, this is Mexican or is this Australian? 90% of the time, you know, I said, you know, is this Mexican or Australian? And they'd guess correctly. So there is... Missed the whimper above the bar for yeah. a couple of days, and then, mm -hmm. but that's one of my favourite pieces in the show because of that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's got all different levels. Yeah. Sure. Well, unfortunately, Ella can't be here. She's the um, artist that did the cellophane um, sculptures. Um, but again, I, I guess she has really sort of formal interests, and um, she's studying painting. She's doing honours, and she um, uses a lot of like um, sort of and lo-fi materials and white plastic and she works a lot with um, opacity and translucent sort of um, kind of materials and um, she really uh, she thought it was important for people to um, walk around the work and it's the whole sort of I guess experiential approach and whatnot um, but then the I was gonna also talk about Sean sorry I didn't introduce him but um, he was doing a performance for a Mexican artist called Esteban and um, Esteban um, works with like cultural groups and like he he does drawings and installations and stuff. Um, so he, he focuses on always related to like drinking. So sometimes he'll focus on cultural groups like Cancun and Spring Break and he does some installation drawing and he was doing also this series um, with like um, the Amish, the, um, also related to drinking and ritualistic ways in which we, I guess, um, drink and then interact with others. And so that's why he really wanted it to happen during the um, opening night where people are drinking as well. And, um, you have to speak to as many people as possible, rotating around the room, so I'd move from artwork to artwork in the same fashion, uh, for five minutes at a time with exactly the same questions and exactly the same enthused approach. So that by, as the, as the opening progressed, people became aware that they were overhearing a conversation that they'd just had with me, like a moment before, you could see people sort of, like, what is this going on? Like, what's going on? Um, but also, just in the conversations themselves, it was really interesting to see that some people were really like happy to be tapped on the shoulder.